Hello, it's Sean Zaman Comic. I gotta give a shout out to Angel Archer. He's an artist friend of mine and he's done this beautiful Robocop picture and he's just really touched me. Thank you so much. I don't know if you know, I do like a tribute on stage to Robocop. I ask people, what's your first best film ever? What's your best film ever? Mine's Robocop. Well, I've chosen Robocop for the set because it's such a brilliant film. But there's lots of like really weird stuff that I can act out on stage. So I really enjoy doing that. So, And I wanted to pick a film that I wouldn't get bored of acting out on stage repeatedly. Because I've got like this low boredom threshold. And like I get bored of sets quite quickly, fortunately for myself. And I've got to, you know, you know, people keep saying, oh, you've got so much energy. I haven't now because it's, like, really late. But, like, I've got to actually enjoy performing the piece. So I selected one of my favourite films. But I've got lots of best ever films. I mean, you know, like The Shining. I used to do a bit about The Shining, but I got bored of it. Evil Dead 2, Big Lebowski, I love. Borat, best film ever made. The Jerk, that always makes me laugh. Life of Brian, you've got Jaws, Terminator 2, Enter the Dragon. Do you know they're remaking Enter the Dragon? How's that going to work without Bruce Lee? Deary me. I mean, obviously, I'll go and watch it. But, I mean, who are they going to cast as Bruce Lee? Who's better than being Bruce Lee? Part of the reason the film worked was because we went to see Bruce Lee. He was an actual man. He's a martial artist. He used to like kicking things and punching things and went, hey like that. I love him. So they're going to make a remake. Probably star Scarlett Johansson. Eh? What did you make of that statement? She did that ghost in the shell, didn't she? So might as well have her as, you know, Bruce Lee. Why not, right? And then we had Police Story, Jackie Chan, Predator. Did you like that film? Star Wars, I could do a tribute to that. I did a bit about Jedi's, but again, meh. And then on film news, right, they said that, you know, Snyder, Zack Snyder's going to release a director's cut of Justice League. And I was thinking, is that really necessary? Did you watch Justice League? It was all right. It wasn't really bad. But does it really need? But the thing is, I find it really interesting, this thing about director's cuts. Because, like, surely, you know, if you've hired a director, like, let's have a look. Like, Paul Verhoeven picked a name out of the hat. Who happened to direct Robocop, the greatest films ever made. Why would you want to clamp down on him, man? Like, who's better than the director? I mean, isn't that why you've paid him for his vision? Why would you want to crap all over it? I mean, what does a studio executive know, really? If a studio executive was that intelligent about filmmaking, surely he'd be making films. Or she. Hey, what do you make of that? So, like, I think all films should be director's cuts. How do you like that? All of them. Like Spielberg. Like, who the hell am I to tell Spielberg how to make a film? All right, don't do that Polar Express if you did that. It's always called. That choo-choo train one. And that other one, Tintin, that wasn't very good, was it? And apparently he's stepping away from Indiana Jones for some reason. Has Oh, dear. Why is he stepping away from? Maybe he's still got too old for this shit. You know what they're saying, uh, lethal weapon. But, yeah, you know, yeah, you got Richard Donner. He's still banging about. I, I talked about him before. And so and my friend said, you know, he's too old. I go, right, he is old, grand. But he's still capable of delivering a kick-ass film. And he said something along the lines of he might get tired. I go, well, you know, if I was like a producer, I'd just get someone to carry him around. Get like a bodybuilder. You know, like in Mad Max, just get him to carry him around. And just like give him a, like a megaphone. Or he could whisper it to his assistant. And then he said, oh, you need, you need to punch him harder in the head. You know, to get the point across that he's the bad guy. You know, and then he'd do it. Like, you know, John McTiernan, he's still alive, right? And I'll tell you what films John McTiernan did, right? You're going to get excited. He did Die Hard, mate. Right? 
Die Hard. Have you seen it? Again, the best film ever made. I do a thing at the end of my sets. Yippee ki yay, mother something. It's a bit rude, isn't it? But that's in tribute to Die Hard. That film, just saying Die Hard, makes me excited. D die, right? But hard. Right? Just think about that. How exciting is that thought process? Is that, is that going in your head? We're all going to die. But how about John McTean is, is suggesting you die hard? Right? Now, I don't know what that entails. And it doesn't sound very palatable. But it is exciting, isn't it? And the film, have you seen it? Of course you haven't, because you were born in 1990, right? And it's probably the ancient times. Watch the film. It's got Bruce Willis in there. Now, the Bruce Willis that you know now, little old guy, you know, pottering around, you know, with that smirk on his face. Well, guess what? In 1988, he was a younger version of that guy you know now. And he had an even bigger smirk on his face. He was very full of himself. But, you know, he's a star and he's, he was a waiter. And then he went into moonlighting the TV show, which I never watched, with Sybil Shepherd. Have you, do you know her from Taxi Driver? Oh, I, um, I spot, did I tell you this? I did a podcast with this guy. And he said to me, he doesn't watch films before 1990 because they're all crap. And I, and I said to him, oh, wow, well, that's a... So interesting way to think about that. Looks like Lauren and Hardy, their back catalogs wiped out for him. Hey, just did ruined. Take that, Stanley Kubrick. The Shining. How about nothing? Hey, good fellas. Not anymore. <laughs> Raging Bull. Raging Bullshit, boy. <laughs> yeah, so that was an interesting thing. So I didn't. I asked him about Robocop, and he, he told me. He preferred that reboot. Now, I've said on stage, we never mentioned that reboot. I'm going to get angry. It's too late for that. Let's not get into a rent at this time of night. Might wake up the neighbours. We can't have that anyway. So, John McTiernan, right, he also did Predator. Now, right, you know if a director gives you Die Hard, and then he gives you Predator, right? Have you seen those? Watch those back-to-back, -back and you learn about films. You learn about excitement. You learn that there's aliens out there that are invisible, that want to rip you, rip you apart and then take out your spine and use it as a trophy. That's what you learn from John McTiernan. Now, this guy is 69 years old, probably pottering him around, pottering him around the house, right? Give him a goddamn Star Wars film. How about that? Give him a Star Wars film. Yeah, tell him. You could do whatever you want with the Star Wars. Make it 18 rated. How about that? Huh? An 18 rated. Oh. Have Arnold going up against a predator that's also a Sith Lord. How do you like that? Arnold's like a Jedi Master. Maybe not Arnold. Because, like, we've got an age society now. So anyway, as soon as someone hits over 50, well, for women, it's like 25, isn't it? She becomes too old. For men, they've got a bit more longevity. Don't know if you saw the last Rambo film. Ah, oh, Rambo. Did you see it, the last one? It really made me laugh. So, like, he's a cowboy now, isn't he? Because that's the natural natural progression for a, a psycho, psychotic killer, is to become a cowboy. So he's got a horse. He's adopted a family. But he's got this lovely farmyard, and he's just built, like, these tunnels. Right? in tribute to his time in Vietnam because apparently he was a tunnel rat or something and his adopted daughter says, what's that? And he goes, oh, I've just built it, you know, for memories. But surely, Rambo, to recover from those memories, you wouldn't build an underground hive thing, which comes into play at the end of the film, spoiler, spoiler, but it's just like a really weird thing to put in. But I like the film and uh, he's doing another superhero film he keeps putting on Instagram. And I'm a big Stallone fan, as you know. But anyway, John McTiernan, right? He can do anything. I mean, Predator and Die Hard. Don't look at the later films. They were all crap. But he's still, there's something there, mate. So let's give him a Star Wars film. It's all about Star Wars nowadays. Or maybe a superhero film. Let's dig him up. Stop being ages. Give him a punt. John McTiernan, look him up. yippee ki yay Mother something. Bye.